Welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about my favorite cozy tea fragrances. I'm having a love affair with the note of tea. And today, I'm going to very rapid fire share with you my absolute favorite cozy tea fragrances. As per usual, I'll put the notes over here or over here. I'm not even going to sniff as we go through. I'm just going to rapid fire, just talk about them, talk about why I love them. And you guys will have a smattering of tea fragrances to choose from. If you're new to my channel, if this is your first time here, hi, my name is Kelly. I live in Texas. I'm obsessed with fragrances. I literally spend hours every single day researching them, smelling them, talking about them, thinking about them. And it's pretty much like I've drank the Kool-Aid and I've gone off the deep end and I decided to make a channel about it so I would have somewhere to direct my obsession. So here we are. Okay, first off on the list today, we have Molecule One Plus Black Tea. If you're not familiar with the original Molecule One, it is one of my absolute favorite fragrances. It's one of the original sort of atmospheric, molecular um, fragrance, like kind of thing where when you walk by someone, they're not necessarily like, oh my God, someone has an amazing fragrance on. They're just like, oh my God, someone's something smells really good. I need to figure out what that was. And I'm not even sure. Was it like someone's body odor? Was it fragrance? It's very, um, it's very mysterious, right? So with the success of Molecule One, they've taken Molecule One and added singular notes. So they've got in the first release, they've got iris, they've got patchouli, and they've got mandarin orange. And then in the second release, they did black tea, they did ginger and guyac wood. And the I love all of them, like literally every single one I'm obsessed with. Maybe not as much the um, mandarin one, because mandarin's just not something I go crazy over, but every other one I'm just obsessed with. And the Molecule One plus black tea is so, so, so stinking good. Um, this is going to be something that you're, out of this list, I'll tell you, like, if you want something like this, this is the one that you're going to want to check out. With this, I think if you want to smell super cool, kind of edgy, a little bit mysterious, if you want your fragrance to kind of like draw people in, and again, not that they're necessarily like, oh my gosh, that fragrance, that perfume smells so good, but they're more so like, what is that smell, you know, and, and very like enticed by it. This is definitely going to be something that you want to check out. Second on the list, we have BDK Gris Charnel, which if you've been watching fragrance videos for a minute, you know about this fragrance. Um, this is going to be a really cozy yet classy and sophisticated fragrance. So this is for someone who wants to smell um, put together. They want to smell classy. They want to smell sophisticated. They want to smell cool. Um, it's very cozy, but can also be dressed up as well. This is a um, primarily almost like an Earl Grey tea, but it also has some fig. I think there's some cinnamon in there, definitely some sandalwood. And this is just kind of like a creamy tea fig fragrance. It's beautiful. It's unique. I've never smelled anything like it. And it's, yeah, it's really hyped up for a good reason. Like it's just an absolutely beautiful blend. So I really recommend that. It's definitely down the middle unisex. Um, I would either wear this when I want to dress up and appear really sophisticated and classy, or I would wear it when I want to be really cozy. It definitely reminds me of like sitting on a couch, bundled up with blankets, drinking a cup of Earl Grey tea, looking out the window, watching the snow fall down, but elevated. It's a very elevated fragrance. So in position number three, we have Gris Chanel Extra, and the Extra version is going to be a little bit more spicy. It's a little bit more masculine. It's, it's got a little bit more of a punch. It's going to be a little bit more of a dressier fragrance. I definitely would not wear this just hanging out around the house. Um, to me, it leans more masculine. A lot of people think that it's down the line, uh, down the middle unisex. I think it leans more masculine because of that extra spice. It kind of reminds me of um, a fragrance by Dolce & Gabbana that has since been discontinued. I think it was called By, B-Y, and it was in a zebra stripe bottle. It was a men's fragrance. I wore it in like 2004, I think it was, and it was definitely spicy. It had a little bit of a kick to it. And so this is kind of like the tea version of that fragrance. So that's going to be for you if you want something that's um, more dressed up, more masculine, and a little bit more spicy. Next up, we have a fragrance that I recently tried for the first time, and this is called Oolong Tea, and I'm completely blanking as I'm talking right now about who, who the house is. I feel like it's one day. Um, I got this because I heard Sebastian talking about it, which is how why I end up sampling a lot of fragrances. And to be honest with you, I was like super shocked at this fragrance, like how photorealistic it is. So 
I personally don't like this fragrance. Like, I don't think it's wearable for me uh, because it, it smells like literal oolong tea. Like you're, it smells like you have your nose in a cup of oolong tea and you're taking a giant inhale, which I like the smell of that, but I don't want to wear it as a perfume. So artistry wise, they've done an excellent job with this fragrance because it's so photorealistic. But for me, I just don't necessarily want to smell like that. I tried to beef it up with some um, vanilla 28 and that just made it even more of a mess. The oolong tea, I mean, not that the oolong tea is a mess, but it turned it into a mess when I tried to layer it because the oolong note just came out on top and just kind of like muddled the vanilla. So this is going to be for you if you want to use scent as a comforting, calming kind of influence, because I did feel super cozy when I wore it. Um, I felt like I was in like a um, Japanese, Chinese, I don't know where oolong comes from, having a brain fart. I felt like I was in like traveling Asia as a guest in someone's house with like a warm cup of tea and like comfy socks on and it was maybe raining outside and I was in like a foreign land and I was reading a book. Like it felt like that kind of vibe. So you might be into it. Um, you might not be, but definitely give that one a try if you like photorealistic tea scents. Okay, next up we have one from Wilhelm Parfumery. This is called Dear Polly and this one is absolutely exquisite. You guys, this is such a beautiful head turning tea scent. This was going viral a couple of years ago. People don't really talk about it anymore, but it is so, 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 so good. And I think it has a note of bergamot in it. I'm going to check real quick. Yes, I was right. It has top notes of bergamot and apple. I'll put the notes up here as well. Um, but this is a really like sexy, pretty, um, yeah, it's definitely going to get you compliments. It smells so good. It's so like alluring and like magnetic the way it smells. And it's definitely a tea, like predominantly tea, but I believe there's also an amber note and maybe a musk note. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty, it's got lots of layers. The longevity for me isn't great. Um, I just noticed that I have like a candle thing right there. Just ignore that. Um, the longevity isn't great on it for me personally. So I definitely have to like overspray and, and keep spraying, but it is just absolutely beautiful. You guys, it's not cheap. That's the thing. Like if you can find a dupe for this, that, um, is a great dupe. I've never heard of a dupe for this. But if you can find a dupe for it that's really good, I would recommend that because I think the Wilhelms are like 300 plus and the longevity is just not, I don't know, to me, like if I'm going to spend 300 bucks on a perfume, I need it to last. You know what I'm saying? So um, yeah, but this is just absolutely pretty. This would be a great like date scent. Just if you want to stand out and be a little bit different and kind of cool and inviting, this is definitely the one for you. Okay, next up on the list, we have a dupe, actually. It's called Citrus Tea. It's by Dossier. And it is the dupe for Lilabo Te Noir. And I absolutely love this fragrance, you guys, because I don't know if there's a note of ginger, but the very first time I sprayed this fragrance, I was like transported back to high school to like 1999, 98, 99. I was dating this guy, Mike, for like a minute and like just head over heels gaga for him. <laughs> and I wore a ginger, I think it was by the Healing Garden, and I think it was called Ginger Lily. Ginger Lily. It was like a body spray. And I wore that like the whole time I was dating him. And so I instantly, I remember I like opened up my package of dossier, pulled out the citrus tea, I sprayed it in the kitchen, and it was like this instant flood of memories, like this rapid fire flood of like, like house parties and like going to basketball games and just like my high school experience just came back and it smelled exactly like the healing garden ginger lily so there's got to be a ginger note in here i'll put the notes up here so you guys can see uh, but this is a really pretty like citrusy zingy tea scent that smells like a like comfort on a rainy day it's so comforting it smells like a rainy day i don't know why even though i've worn it like when the sun's shining as well um, this is my go-to gym scent as well. I feel like it's not confronting. Like I feel like if, if people were to smell that next to you at the gym, they're not going to get like choked out. It's going to smell really refreshing and energizing. It's really pretty. It's like citrusy and zingy, but also has this really like rounded out kind of soft, almost musky thing to it. It's just gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'll definitely be repurchasing that when I run out. I've never smelled the original. I've heard that they're not identical, uh, but this just totally yeah, it knocks it out of the park for me. 
Okay, next up we have our Keist Indigo Smoke. This is very different from the other teas on this list. This is a more of a um, herbal kind of uh, meditative tea scent. So this the tea, the particular tea in this one, I think is called Lopsong something. I'll put it up here. And this is a very like smoky kind of spicy, um, very unique scent. It's going to transport you to the Himalayas. It's, it smells um, otherworldly. It smells meditative. It smells uh, like you're sitting in like a ritual of some sort. Um, it's definitely the kind of fragrance that I would wear to shift my mood, to help me calm down. Um, to put me into a reflective state. This is going to be like a very aromatherapeutic scent. It's very beautifully done, very unique, nothing else out there like this. It's not going to be for everyone because it's not very like perfumey, um, but it's absolutely beautiful. I love everything that Arquiste does. They're my absolute hands down favorite house. And so, yeah, I love this. It's not like my favorite from the line because it's not something like for me, I just want to smell a little bit more like pretty, a little bit more sexy. This isn't that. It's very, um, like I said, like meditative and reflective. So if that's your vibe, definitely check that out. Uh, the next one on the list, I didn't even realize had similar a similar name. But the next one on the list is called Nest Indigo. And this is very similar to Dear Polly. It's the closest to Dear Polly, uh, but not identical. And this one is, again, kind of a citrusy tea scent. It reminds me a lot of Nez tea. So again, going back to the 90s, I spent a summer um, on the Cape with my friend and her family, and we were drinking like Nez tea cans. If those of you that were around in 1992, if you remember the Nez tea uh, cans, or was it Lipton? No, it's the Nez tea. They were like the lemon iced tea cans. And Nest Indigo smells exactly like that to me. So it's very, um, very citrusy, very tea forward, um, very clean, very pretty also. Um, yeah, this really pretty fragrance. Again, closest thing to Dear Polly. So if you fall in love with Dear Polly and you want something similar, it's not as good, but it's similar and way less expensive. Give this a shot. And then the last one on the list is completely different. This is from Ariel Shoshana and this is called Sunday. And the reason why this one is so different is because this is a matcha tea um, focus instead of like black tea and, you know, the, these other kind of teas that we've been talking about. So Ariel Shoshana Sunday smells like a green, to me, smells like a green macaroon. It's very powdery, very matcha, very green smelling, almost like a mate smell. Um, very comforting. Again, perfect. Like the name is perfect, calling it Sunday because it, it smells like you're just like hanging around on a Sunday, like being cozy maybe eating some food, um, not doing anything too crazy. It's a very comforting, very soothing scent. So that about wraps it up. I would love to hear from you guys. If there's any tea scents that you love that I did not cover in this video, please let me know in the comments below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.